Now let's move on to the posterior compartment of the arm. These muscles that lie behind the humerus and the median lateral intermuscular septi. What we have are triceps brachii. This muscle has got three heads. A long head, a lateral head, and a medial head, which we've seen some of before. We've mentioned the long head when we covered various spaces. We can see the long head here is passing from the infraglenoid tubercle of the glenoid cavity. The long head of biceps went to the supraglenoid tubercle. Well, the long head of triceps is coming from the infraglenoid tubercle. It then unites to form this common tendon where the medial head and lateral head converge and all three attach onto the olecranon. We've also got a small muscle here which is known as anconius coming from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus towards the olecranon here, anconius. But I won't really mention that. So if we look at the detail, we've got triceps brachii, we've got the long head coming from the infraglenoid tubercle, we've got a lateral head and medial head. The lateral head is coming from posterior, the humerus is coming from superior to the radial groove. So if we look here, the lateral head, this is the radial groove running down here, superior to the radial groove, we have the lateral head. Inferior to the radial groove, we have the medial head. So here we can see superior to the radial groove, the lateral head, inferior to the radial groove, the medial head, separated by this radial groove here. We'll later on see an important blood vessel and nerve run along here. All of these three muscles converge onto the olecranon. They're supplied by the radial nerve and they're important in extending the elbow joint. So they're the antagonist of brachialis and biceps. The long head, because it crosses the glenohumeral joint, also serves to extend the shoulder joint. I said I'd mention it just briefly, but we've got anconius running from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus to the olecranon, also supplied by the radial nerve, and this really supports triceps in extending the elbow joint. So here we've got two dissections, two cartoons showing dissections of the posterior aspect, here we've got a slightly more lateral view. We've got deltoids still intact, and we can see coming from this bottom inferior border of deltoid, we've got the various heads, long head, lateral head, and a medial head down here of triceps running towards the olecranon. And here when deltoid has been exposed, when we've, sorry, removed deltoid, we can see that these muscles are running down towards the olecranon. We can see the olecranon here. We can see the radial groove here. We can see we've got the lateral head of triceps here and also here. What we've done is we've cut through the lateral head of triceps to expose this medial head coming from inferior to the radial groove. We've still got the long head up here. We can see it forming the quadrangular space here. We've got the long head, we've got the lateral head, which has been cut. Here's the other side of the lateral head. And we've got the medial head. These are all converging with Anconius onto the olecranon. So the proximal attachments of the triceps are shielded by deltoid. The proximal attachments are shielded by deltoid. But removal of deltoid can highlight their attachments, as we can see in this image down at the bottom. We can see the lateral intermuscular septum, the lateral intermuscular septum here, separating the anterior from the posterior com compartments. And we can also, in this diagram here, remind ourselves of those three spaces on the posterior wall of the auxilla. So the quadrangular space we can see here, the triangular space we can see here, and the triangular slit or the triangle interval we can see here. We can also in relation to the radial groove, see the origin of the medial and lateral heads of triceps.